Hey YouTube, this is part three in my series about building my movable chicken tractor. In parts one and two, I talked about the motors, some of the wiring, the metal framing. If you haven't seen those videos, click on the link in the upper right to start at video one. In this video, I'm going to go over the wood framing, the roof, the lights, the fencing, all those kinds of pieces. So enjoy. Here's what I'm envisioning so far for the way the coop section of this is going to get built. Everything you're seeing is just screwed together quickly so I could take it back apart again if I have to. And I probably will. So, but here's what I'm going to plan on doing. So you see how the poles here, this one right here, and this one on the other side are taller. So this, the roof will slope from high point there down to a low point. I've got about a four foot um, point from there, uh, from the peak down to the this floor is four feet in the front, about three feet in the back. So this floor you're seeing is where the chickens coop will start. There up will be the area that the ch chickens can live in. Everything below it will be closed off and that's where the batteries and all the other electronics is going to be protected underneath there. Um, let me bear with me for a second the bad camera work. Just show you roughly what I'm envisioning. This is just a real rough representation but that will be more or less where the little uh, ramp will come down to let the chickens out of the coop. That one's way too long, but something in that area will let them out. Uh, what else? So my plan is that I need to build a large space for food and a large space for water so that I can store enough in there to last at least a week, hopefully more. So I'm thinking that this front corner right here will be a boxed in area where I'm going to have a water tank. And then on the opposite side, there'll be a boxed in area for something to store food in. I haven't really figured that part out yet. So there'll have to be a door that opens on one side to be able to fill up the water. Same thing on the other side to fill up the food. And then somewhere next to one of them, I'm not sure which, will be where the nesting boxes go. And then above that, I'll put a, a roost up for them. The only other thing that I'll have to build is on the very back of it. Here, actually, let me walk around outside and look at it from the back. So back here, there's obviously going to have to be a door Basically, I'm going to make a panel, this whole bottom area here, I'm going to make a panel that just comes out so that you can just get to the batteries or whatever else you need to. And then back here, I'm going to make it so that most of this area can also open up really big and wide so that I can clean it. Unlike the portable coop that I built last time, this is going to have a solid floor, as you see. The other one has a, wa um, a wire mesh floor, and therefore it never needs to get cleaned, which is a nice feature, but I can't do that in this one. So, say la vie. All right, I'm going to keep going and I'll turn you back on when I have more to show. Now that the front of the coop part is put on, I can start actually building the interior part. I've already pre-cut all of the pieces for it, so I'm going to just show you briefly what I'm planning on doing, and then I'll start putting it together. Forgive the shaky camera work here, I'm going to try to explain this and also move a few pieces of wood to show you how it'll come together all at the same time. So on here, on the right, this is what I'm planning on using for their food, just a regular old plastic tote with the grain in it. I've got some ideas about how I'm going to put a PVC fitting on the bottom of that and then run it down underneath um, the floor out into the area where the chickens are outside for them to eat. They won't be eating inside the coop. So um, what I'll be doing is taking a piece of wood from here. You see I've already got an angle I'll cut on this piece. It'll be coming down sloping and then it, it'll have a vertical wall right here. This vertical wall will be 18 inches tall. Just keep that in mind. I'll explain why in a second and you'll be able to access that area through a door on this side. I haven't fully planned this out yet, but I think it'll probably be a flip-up door. I don't know, I might make it a swinging door. I, like I said, I haven't figured that out yet. Here on the back will be two very large doors. The whole back area of it will be able to open up, which will make it easy for cleaning. So those will be swing out doors, one to the left and one to the right. Uh, down below, that will be, I'm thinking, just a removable panel instead of a, a hinged door. The only time I can envision, envision ever opening that is if I had to get in there to do some work, 
which means I most likely will want to just have it as open as possible. So I'll just make that removable. Over here on the left, that's the water tank. Um, I'll get more into how I'm going to plumb that and fill it at another part of the videos. But um, I've got a box all built that's going to cover the entirety of that all the way around, and it's 18 inches tall. So my plan from there is I'll run a, a roost between these two 18 inch tall pieces and that will be a spot where the chickens can roost and I'll probably build a second one for them maybe starting like back here or something like that but anyway 18 inches tall seems to be a pretty good roost height so that was my thought for them and then here in the middle again excuse my camera work will be these couple of pieces of wood something like that and there'll be, so, be a piece of plywood through the middle piece of plywood over the front with some openings and a piece of plywood on top and so there'll be two roosting bo uh, nesting boxes one right there and one right there so it'll be quite a bit of the interior of this was so going to get filled up with stuff but this is just a summer coop so the chickens don't really need a whole lot of inside space they'll be outside most of the time um, you can see I've got the door cut two windows those are going to get screened over and just be open all the time like I said it's not a winter coop so I don't need to put in glass and I've got this prepared for a, um, a movable door, but I'm not going to put that in right now. That can be at a later date. Um, but anyway, I did cut the opening the correct size for it, and I left some gaps around the edges so that a piece of plywood can fit in there and slide up and down. All right, I'm going to start putting this together. There is the interior put together. On the left, two nesting boxes. I'm not going to worry about putting a side right here because it's going to have the exterior of the coop blocking off that side. So those are 12 by 12 nesting boxes. This box over here, the lid isn't attached yet, but um, there's where the water will go. This will get secured down. The only way into that area will be through the side over here. And then over on this side, this is where the food is going to go. So like I mentioned before, you're going to access the food through that space right there. It's plenty of space to get the uh, lid off of that container and then pour an entire bag of grain into that container without having to remove the container. Now that I have the siding all cut and most of it is screwed onto the coop, um, I've got the doors cut. I'm ready to start doing the wiring. So here is what I'm planning on doing at this point in the project. Uh, where to start? All right, so underneath the coop, I've got a mounting block for the power, 12 terminals, and a mounting block for the ground. Same thing, 12 terminals. So I have 12 different circuits that I could run. Initially, I'm going to run every single electrical component on its own circuit because I only have, I think, six that I'm going to run. But in the future, if I need more, which sounds absurd, I know, but I might, um, I can combine the lights, all four light circuits together into one, so free up three more spots. So that's probably first thing, get those mounted. Uh, next thing is I've got my wiring ready. Um, copper is crazy expensive these days, so but I had to do it. I bought solid core 14 gauge uh, wire. It's way more than I need for my LED lights, but it's the correct size for my pump. So I just bought one size for everything. Uh, Alright, so that segments me into my pump. I bought this little DC 12 volt pump off of Amazon. It's kind of slow. I would like something that would be a little bit faster, but it's also small and 12 volt and was affordable. So this is what I've got. So that's going to get wired into the space inside of that box. And then I just bought a, a simple on-off toggle switch to control that. So I've got to run one circuit for that. Um, I'm going to put a light circuit on the door over here where the laying box is and also the water is so that you open this door, you're going to get a light that automatically turns on. And that switch will be one of these. This is a magnetic switch. These are kind of cool because you can wire them to either be no, normally opened or normally closed. 
can't see it in this bag, but there's two different, there's a ground and then there's two different types of power terminals, so you can wire it to be either direction. So one of those will go on this door uh, to automatically turn on and off the light when you open the door. This one will get used a lot because obviously I have to get in to get the eggs. So that will be a regular um, used circuit. There'll be another one for this door right here. Again, for lights. The light for the egg laying box side will probably be pretty minimal. I'm thinking just a couple of LEDs in each box because I'm going to be coming in there at nighttime and I don't want to just make the whole coop bright if I don't have to. This one, however, I'm going to make it pretty bright because the only time I can envision ever opening that is if I have to fix something or clean the coop. So I'll make that one probably, probably be lots of LEDs. And then same idea over here, another circuit. So you open up this door and there's going to be a little magnetic switch and it's going to turn on a light so that I can see how much food is left in the tote. Uh, so I've got one circuit here one circuit for this light, another circuit for lights over there, another circuit for the pump, so we're at four, and then I'm gonna run, um, I bought a solar panel, so I've got to run the wiring down to the battery for the solar panel and the charge controller. Uh, eventually I'm gonna run another circuit underneath so that I can just have some lights underneath when I open up the door down there, but I don't have to do that today. I feel like there was another circuit that I'm forgetting at the moment, but It'll come to me. Anyway, that's what I'm going to do next, get the wiring all in place. So uh, here we go. Unfortunately, I lost most of my video files from the last week of the build, so I'm going to have to voice over the pieces I still have left. Here I'm putting together the bottom part of the water system. These PVC pieces and metal fittings are all going to get put together and then attached at the bottom, which will stick out into the coop part of the tractor for those uh, little water cups to fill up. The black barb on the right is the piece where the hose connects, runs up to the water tank. It's all gravity fed from there. All you'll need are these pieces. You can get them at any hardware store. Um, the little water cups, I got those off of Amazon, and then some PVC cement, and it goes together pretty easily. Here I'm shingling the roof. Pretty straightforward stuff. I don't have any video of me putting the solar panel on. The kit that I got, I got it off of Amazon. It came with the mounting brackets, the wiring, the charge controller, everything in one, so I just followed the directions on how to mount that. For the fenced-in part of the coop, I used half-inch PVC pipe bent over the top and secured at both ends with half-inch conduit clamps. Um, over the top of that, I just put regular chicken wire. You could also do it with hardware cloth, but it would be more expensive. I don't have any video of me creating this skirt that secures around the bottom of this area. I bought some canvas from, I think it was Amazon, cut it into strips about 12 inches wide. On the top part, I secured it using a grommet kit. You can get that from any hardware store. And then on the bottom, I used zip ties to secure a heavy piece of chain. The last piece is I used a toilet flange and some three inch PVC pipe to connect the tote down into where the chickens can get their food. All right, that's it for this video series. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it gave you some information about how you could build one of these yourself. Overall, I couldn't be happier with how this turned out. I've been using it for a couple of summers now and it's really working great. I am gonna make a few adjustments to it this summer, so I'll probably shoot a video showing those. And I've got some ideas, so I might build another version of this uh, over the next year or so. Watch out for those videos as well. As always, thanks for watching. Give it a thumbs up, share it, and I'd love if you could subscribe. Thanks.